Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We're here talking about the Nikon Z8 mirrorless camera, talking about its video and still capabilities. And we have an amazing portrait, wedding, and fashion photographer out of Las Vegas, Mr. Jerry Guionis, with us. And we're going to talk about everything that happened behind the scenes on his shoot and how he shot this amazing video, as well as some incredible still photos, as we would always expect. But let's start off by looking at Jerry's video. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you so much, mate. Very excited to be here. I can't wait for this conversation because it's always a pleasure to talk to you about your insight and your creative. And I would love to put the Z8 in your hands again because uh, it looks so good in your hands. <laughs> and really want to talk about uh, the project that you worked on. Right. The first impressions of the camera that you have, how you worked it into your creative, some of the good things that you've learned about this camera along the way. What were those buzz things, the wow things uh, that you've seen? And, and basically how it worked for you within the shoots that you've done. Now you did a video and you did some still photography, right? Right, so I had five days with the camera. I decided to start with stills, get myself warmed up a little bit. So a day of stills, then we had three days of filmmaking and then we had another day of stills as well. So the first thing I noticed is exactly what you mentioned. It's so ergonomical uh, for me personally. For me, um, <laughs> I talked about the fact that it actually fits my hand perfectly. There's no, there's no wastage of my fingers here. I can actually put it here, I put my finger on the shutter and it fits my hand personally perfectly. Uh, in terms of the ergonomics, I knew where the buttons were because I'm familiar with the camera system. I'm familiar with obviously the mirrorless camera system. So being able to shoot fluidly and flawlessly, um, it was just fantastic. So I didn't have to think about it. For me, the camera is only a tool and you make the difference. So I don't really geek out about camera systems. I geek out about people. But the fact that I have a camera that actually helps me connect with my subjects so it becomes an effortless thing, well, that makes it great for me. You and I talk about this all the time and the way you handle cameras and just 
dials going a certain way or the muscle memory and trying to pick something up. And we go back to the incredible film you made for the Z9. Um, and now we task you to do the same thing uh, when we come along with the Z8. And of course, you're always going to give us a little bit of everything and, and some new creative and thoughts and ideas. Uh, talk about familiarity and how important it is to you when you're picking up a new tool. All my favorite things were on this camera because I had the muscle memory from the Z9. I had the features that I learned. And we, in fact, learned from the Z6 and the 7 and the 6.2 and the 7.2. So for me, it was great. And I had the familiarity, too, of course, with the D850. And then, of course, now this comes out and that familiarity with the size, with all the features that I've been able to become comfortable with and use with the, the Z9 and all those different things was, was cool. It was very cool. Yeah, you bring up the DA50, and I know there are a lot of DA50 owners out there and looking to transition into mirrorless. What would you tell them? If you have never photographed with mirrorless, you're missing out because you can get to your destination in a lot quicker, more efficient way, more fun way. You have a lot more freedom and confidence. The fact that you can actually view the image that you've just taken by putting your eye right up to the camera in full sun. Even just crazy small things that I think are very thoughtful. The fact that you can just take off the lens and not have to worry about the the sensor being exposed right sensor i think many field. of us like yeah. you take off the lens and it'll be like a scientific sort of surgical operation and you're covering this and everyone's covering this and i haven't actually had to actually clean my sensor in my z9 ever so just that alone is crazy awesome let alone the fact that you add the features you add all the filmmaking capabilities and everything that we use um is is yeah very nice and speaking of the filmmaking what does the form factor mean to you in this camera Look, for filmmaking, you need a small form factor. And when we say we need, we need it, you want it. Now, at the end of the day, like if you look at the way motion pictures were made and they're still made with these massive cameras and rigs, okay, they're, they're big and great. But if you want to use it in a, in a hybrid kind of a way or, or a more efficient way, you need a small form factor. If you want a small slider, if you want a gimbal. So with my film, you know, I really wanted something that was thoughtful, meaningful. Um, and I didn't want to add too, ma too much embellishment. Let's talk about yeah. that a little bit yeah. because I want to talk about what you did yeah. to come up with this creation, where the creative came from, and certainly then how the tool worked within that, but sure. more about what we just saw in this video. And right. it, I mean, it's a beautiful romantic piece and it's something that really speaks to life and it really, it does touch your heart. You feel that that happened? Uh, it, it, there was a lot of goosebump moments. On the morning of my 12 year anniversary, uh, in fact, you gave me the call and said, Jerry, we'd love for you to be part of the Z8. We'd love for you to do stills and, and video. And I'm like, so all night, I'm like, we're celebrating our love for each other. We were reminiscing about our 12 year relationship. And I'm like, we should really celebrate life with this video. How do we do that? Well, what are the milestones of somebody's life? Of course, there are many, 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 but I'm like, well, where do we begin? I mean, I, I, I started my career photographing weddings. So I'm like, well, okay, why don't we have a couple falling in love then he proposes, then they get married, then maybe they have a dog first, you know, as a test, test run for a baby. Um, now there's a maternity sort of image and then she has a baby and then the baby grows up and then graduates and then we come full circle. And if you remember that shot that we had that couple, you know, Lisa and Dylan kissing and hugging at the same time, I wanted to keep us a little mannerism at the end of the older couple kissing and hugging the same way so that even though we've gone the like you know several decades afterwards that the love still exists and and that overarching theme that i always talk about is that a life well lived starts with a moment and why not tell your story with with the z8 it was actually all done in the confines of my home and barely one other location so i wanted to show photographers and established filmmakers how do you create something out of nothing uh, with some beautiful movement and beautiful symbolism? And, um, and I, I, I think we did that. I think it was really fun to do. Well, I think coming from home, knowing you and Melissa as a couple, you are a heck of a rom romantic couple. And to translate that into this piece, I thought really, I mean, you could see that. You could feel that. Um, you did also shoot stills, though, right? So a portion of this was video, a portion was stills. How did you make that all work within the same shoot? It, I mean, it's tough to change your brain because when you start doing filmmaking, everything sort of changes. You have to shoot continuous light. You have to pay attention to things. Lighting has to be consistent for a very long time. Sometimes you have to overpower what's happening outside the ambience. So these things combined all happen, but a good post-production is good pre-production. You have to know what you're getting. I did a, a storyboard of exactly what I wanted. I sort of said, Jerry, don't be greedy now. Um, you know, you have to do what you do. But when it comes to stills, it was very much... 
I have the elements in front of me and then I don't really overthink the shot until I'm ready to click that shutter. Then I'm like, all right, I need to get a feeling of what, the, what does that girl in that dress look like in this lighting and then it evolves. So part of the shot was this, uh, this beautiful same-sex couple. That was my first introduction to the camera. And within 30 seconds of shooting with the camera, it was like, like it was no longer, oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna use a very new device here. Is that gonna be an obstacle for me during this shoot? Within a few seconds, I was done. I was just in play mode. So having that, uh, that experience straight away gave me all this confidence of, yeah, this is just another day for me. You know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. But representing Nikon as an ambassador and really as an ambassador to the industry, I wanted to make sure and confidently I can tell people I'm, this is what it works like in strobe or natural light or daylight or black and white mode or the sepia mode. So for me, this still photography was just, you know, my original wheelhouse, I guess, in my, in my career. And it was just wonderful to shoot with. It was just very, it was just absolutely joyful, absolutely joyful. Yeah, I think I, I definitely associate with that. It's like within minutes, you're shooting a camera that you're already familiar with. Sure. The form factor is what makes it so appealing to right. me. And the ability to have just a couple of buttons and dials a little bit different on the top, everything mm -hmm. else remains the same. And so that transition is so important because you're not thinking about, okay, what button am I moving for now? Right. And I'm sure, you know, custom settings is something that plays into your role. How important is that with the Z8? Man, the custom settings, I think m many people underestimate the importance of custom settings because you get a camera and then you sort of, you're floundering with your manual modes, you're floundering with wh where things go. But I just say, read the manual. And I know that sounds really basic, but, and I know that the manual that comes with a camera is quite small, but if you go into the layers of the PDF, I would say, read it. It's really important because we quickly found out, I know we, we often joke about this, but the way I use the camera is, you know, we have the two function buttons over here. So when I'm using it in still mode, uh, that top button accesses my menu. So my menu is the shortcuts to things that you use often. So I don't have to think about crop ratio or silent mode when I'm photographing a ceremony or white balance or anything like that because it already exists. I'm not looking at layers upon layers upon layers and then looking foolish in front of my client or my subject. So I have that. Then the bottom button, I have preview the file that I just had, had taken. And then in preview mode, I can actually get my AF on button and then get 100% magnification on the shot that I just took. The cool thing is that when you're in video mode, these buttons can be whatever you want them to be. For example, if you're doing internal high-res zoom, so you can actually use these two buttons as, hey, this is a wide zoom, this is the closer up one. And that's the cool thing is there's so many things that are unique to the camera that people don't really understand. I, I suggest that anyone using this camera or any device is looking at what it can do. It's that pre-production that will give you that freedom and confidence to take that shoot to that next step. You know, I've always said that the camera is only a tool and you make the difference, but you have to learn the tool, especially in this day and age, to take advantage of what's there because it'll just make your life easier. See, one day I want you to copy all your settings on a card to me so I can have Jerry's camera inside <laughs> of my camera. I may not have your artistic ability, but I always look, sum it up as I do everything I can to set those buttons up so I don't have to pull my eye away from the viewfinder right. ever. And when, but um, talk about uh, maybe some of the top things, the features themselves within still and within video. And start with still. So with stills, what I like to do is, um, for me, when I'm photographing a portrait, I'm usually photographing on a tripod. So I can put an audio area AF and I can just have a conversation and banter with my clients at 1.2 or 1.8 and have no, there's no question that they'll be in focus. So that has been a very big thing for me, whereas normally I would make them laugh and da -da 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 -da, and then focus on their eye and then miss it and go back and then look at it and I'll go again. So. The uh, auto area AF and that focus system is, is incredible. The black and whites out of camera for me are incredible. I don't know what recipe is in that, this, this sorcery that's in that camera, uh, but I love the black and whites out of camera. Um, the sepia tone, the sepia picture control, I absolutely love as well. Uh, the EVF, it took me literally minutes way back in the, in the Z6 and Z7 days to, to not even think about that I'm actually looking at a glorified little mini TV. So uh, not seeing real life through a reflection of a mirror for me was, I just don't think about it anymore. I'm not looking at an LED. I'm actually looking at real life because I'm, I'm getting a true representation of what it feels like to me. So to see live exposure, to see those kinds of things is important. Also, I love shooting actually um, square in camera. I like having a raw file that's square. 
uh, or multiple exposures. The ability to, to have three shots, you know, and take that first shot of a multiple exposure series and see that ghosting effect and then do that second or third one, it, it becomes more predictable. Like I said, there are things that this camera can achieve that would either be impossible or take too long to do the old way. And you have to go into post-production, more computer time, right? And I'm not that guy. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I mean, I know how to direct post-production, whether it's editing or whether it's you know, photography and all that kind of stuff, but I like to get it right in camera because I'm not a lazy shooter. I'm very precise. I take less shots. I'll nail, I'll nail them quicker. But for me, you know, I've, I've said about this camera, it's sort of keeping up with my sophistication. So being in the industry for 30 plus years and teaching photographers for 20 plus years, it's sort of like I'm trying to keep up with Nikon sophistication so that I can take advantage of all the features that it has so that we're sort of neck and neck. As, as Nikon improves, I can improve and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be great. Really, the camera's only what you make of it and, of and how you use it. And, and now on the video side of things, what were the video things that impacted you the most, the features? So what, what I didn't realize about this camera is that it has the ability to have a, a focus racking, like where you can pick an A and B point Whereas you'd normally do that in many different ways. You'll have either a focus puller do it, you'll, you'll do it manually, you'll have two points where you focus. So being able to do that is great. The ability to shoot 8K, 60 frames internal, that's pretty amazing. You'll normally need a, a separate device. Um, the ability to shoot 4K up to 120 frames a second internally is all also to, amazing. All to card. Yeah, so um, I also got my hands on uh, the latest, greatest, smallest gimbal. So I had the camera on there and it balanced beautifully. So using a small form factor gimbal and a small form factor slider with this, it worked beautifully in tandem. And, I, I, and, I'll, and I've said in the BTS, which you will probably show shortly, for me, I don't look at this as a, a still camera and there's a little bit of filmmaking in there, like it's an afterthought. Oh, let me just add another feature in there. Or the opposite, if you're a filmmaker, decide to shoot stills, there's no compromise. So it's, it's really, they're both independently incredible and they work incredibly in tandem. So it's really, I, be, I believe this is the thing. We are living in an age that everyone is seeking attention, okay? So social media, all these things, everyone is seeking attention. We often get stopped when we look at social media, when we see video, when we see motion. It, it's more yep. interesting because we have sound, we have movement. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing more powerful than a beautiful fraction of a second, a still moment, but if you're on the fence about, do I dabble in video? Well, you should be. I mean, this is the way, this is the way now. This is the way you need to stand out now. And there's a couple of things that you just need to know, like your, your, your shutter speed should be doubled your frame rate. So what does that mean? If you're shooting at 24 frames a second, which most people will, will, will shoot at, then your speed should be 50th of a second. And you're gonna, you're gonna need an ND filter. You'll probably need a gimbal of some kind, but start by just playing with slow mode. It's very forgiving. So th you know? that's important because people like yeah. me, taking that leap into video, I always just say to myself, I don't have the time, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the ability, I'm, I'm afraid. But uh, what do you think of people, or what would you say to people who have that fear factor of taking a leap? What's the worst that can happen? It's digital. You don't like it, you delete it. It's no big deal. I, I think we often are afraid of what we don't know. Don't get me wrong, I was there myself several years ago, and I'm like, well, I, I have a, a good eye I, I, in, in the sense of I direct when I photograph. So for me, it was a, an organic, obvious sort of evolution of what I would do. I just think it's a responsibility that every image maker must, must do is actually flick that switch and play. Once you understand the power of the device and the tool in front of you, there's no excuse. So you, you put together this incredible video, you shoot it, right? You're shooting these stills. The files that came out of the camera, when you first saw them on the computer, what are you saying to yourself? What I was saying is that when the first thing you do, when you're photographing a lot of it at 1.2, because I had my hands on the 85 f1.2, uh, which is sort of just every portrait photographer's dream lens. So I just, I zoomed up to everything very quickly. And even though that I did that in camera, but to see that up close and sharp exactly where you need it to be, that predictability was, was, was important for me, the predictability of that file. So the colors that come straight out of the camera are legendary. We all know this about the Nikon camera system. That's predictably amazing. Um, and when this came out, and we know a lot of the features are quite similar to the Z9, it was always gonna be predictably amazing. And I'm here to confirm that it is. 
and I gave the, these files to a, a Nikon ambassador in Australia, uh, Rocco Ancora, incredible artist in his own right. But I know he does a lot of your post production, right? On yeah, prints. and he was he was looking at the files. He goes, "These are incredible. Like the dynamic range is is incredible. The color palette's incredible. The files are amazing." So that was just comforting to know out of the gate that okay, we've we've got something special here, uh, and. See, actually, the, the film was actually filmed in 12-bit and RAW, which means that you need a lot of hard drive space, by the way, <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> One of the byproducts of shooting RAW video. But yeah. it's okay. You know, you've got a lot of information. But that's, that's the blessing and the curse. The curse is, okay, big deal. You've got to buy some more hard drive space. The blessing is you've got all this information that needs that hard drive space to take your file from. So whether you want... Uh, to play with the color grading and and, uh, and and have some fun with those colors. Whether you're, and also, by, by the way, too, you've, you've got the waveform in the back of the camera. So if you need to understand what a good exposure is, there is a histogram, and, but let's say it's the, it's the filmmaker's histogram. Let's call it that. That waveform truly makes us understand the detail in the skin tones, the highlights, the shadows, and where that exposure needs to be. So it gives us the complete gamut to play with in post-production. So having all that in front of us and being able to bring out the best in it was very liberating. And, and that's the thing is I can go into, you know, any shoot now with absolute confidence that I've got the information that I need and now I can go play. You know? So in this shoot, uh, let's go back to the video, multi-camera setup. Um, yes and no. So in fact, you know, I think we had three cameras. Um, I shot every second of the video. Uh, I was very insistent that, you know, there's some times where I pay a dual role, but I, I needed to film every last second of this video. Um, the BTS was two cameras, so the BTS footage that you'll see shortly, I'm assuming, uh, was shot with the, uh, the Z8s as well. But I wanted to know what it felt like on a small form factor slider. I wanted to know what it felt like you know, filming on a, on a, on a smaller gimbal. I, I use it handheld, I use it in many different ways. So for me, I can with confidence, someone can come up to me and ask me a question as an ambassador because I'm representing a brand. How does this feel? How did it work? And I can say exactly that every second was shot by me. Um, I lit everything, I directed everything and um, certainly the team was there and that we had a great time with, it, with our team. And I'm, you know, when I have an idea for a scene, I will, I'll gather all, all my crew and say, guys, this is what I'm thinking. Um, and then everyone will add this little perspective that may be just a different an angle or something that, that, that you're, never, you're never the smartest person in the room. Collectively, you, you are a genius. <laughs> Individually, you are not. Yeah. Yep, there is strength in numbers. There's no Absolutely. doubt about that. So yeah. looking at this camera as we start to wind down, and we will indeed see your BTS as, as we leave so people can see everything or most of the things that happen behind the scenes. For anyone out there, you know, with regard to Z8, what would your best uh, words be, your best advice be as to why, or your best thoughts? Why would you get this camera? If you're ever gonna go to mirrorless, now would be the time. Like, this is just an unquestionable time that this is the one that you wanna look at uh, and that you wanna invest in. If you're using another camera within the ecosystem of Nikon and everything, this is a compelling camera because it does have that sweet spot form factor. It has the the incredible features of a, of a bigger body as well. Um, and there's a bit more sophistication, the fact that the sensors have changed and evolved and everything like that. So if you have, like let's say a Z6 and a, and a 7, which are incredible cameras, and I still have them myself, this just takes you over the edge. It just gives you more possibilities. It, it, you, you're able to shoot in different ways that you can't with those smaller ones. It just It's a natural evolution of things, but this is a sweet spot. So recently Nikon introduced an accessory for video called the MCN10. I believe you used it on this shoot. You want to talk about that just a little bit? I did. It's a, it's a beautiful grip that has a lot of the features that you would normally use. Now, if you've ever seen a BTS or behind the scenes video of a filmmaker, they would normally hold a, a gimbal of some kind and press it maybe. Reach in, right. And then, then you'll unbalance the, the gimbal or there's always this thing going on over here. The fact that you could just with one little simple cord um, and then get a grip that's got perfect sort of balance, beautifully ergonomic in your hands and be able to adjust exposure and record on that handle is just fantastic. Also the ability to attach it to a gimbal, the, the ability to attach it to the handle of a, a tripod head, whether it's on a, on, a, on a stand, whether it's actually on a slider, yeah, I, I, that's the best what I can use. It's very thoughtful. Like a lot of a lot of thoughts gone into where those buttons are, and I love the fact that it's native to Nikon. That that it is a Nikon grip, because it works seamlessly with the camera. 
Very well said. I would love to put this camera in your hands one more time so everybody can see it. I think it's a perfect fit. I, yeah. I think it looks good. It makes you, you look great. And, and you certainly make it look great with the work that you do. So thank you for spending time with us and sharing your insights and everything that happened on the shoot, the creative, how you made this all happen, the shooting the video, shooting stills. Nothing short of inspirational and outstanding. So thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity, mate. Thank you. So, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we Hopefully you've picked up something uh, really solid about the Z8 and what Jerry has had to say. And now you get to see a little bit of what happens behind the scenes. Let's roll Jerry's BTS. Hi, I'm Jerry Guionis, Nikon ambassador, portrait, fashion, wedding photographer, and filmmaker. And I'm so proud to be one of the first people in the world to photograph and film with the Nikon Z8. My experience with the Z9 translated perfectly with the Z8. Literally after a couple of minutes, I forgot that I was photographing with a brand new camera. Nikon's legendary ergonomics were just perfect. It fit right in my hand and the files that come out of this camera, be it video or stills, are exquisite. Having menu items in the same place, having buttons in the same place was really important to me. If you're a photographer and then you flick that switch and now you can record motion, I don't feel like that filmmaking capability is actually an afterthought. Well, if I was a filmmaker and decided to actually flick that switch and photograph stills, I don't feel like there's any compromise at all. They're independently incredible and work beautifully in tandem. The fact that we have Nikon's legendary optics is incredible. The 85mm f1.2, it is exquisite. There's a certain quality that goes with that f1.2 lens, that gorgeous shallow depth. It's perfect for filmmaking because you usually want to shoot with a shallow depth of field, but that shallow depth of field suits my style of photography perfectly. Also, the 50mm f1.2 works seamlessly and perfectly with the Nikon Z8, shooting with the macro lens, a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and what I believe is one of the most underrated lenses in the Nikon S-Series lens lineup is the 24 to 120 f4. I've been photographing for a very long time, and I still experience so much joy with every shoot that I do. So when Nikon comes to you and says, hey, here's a brand new camera, go play, now we're off. I want to put this camera through its paces and test its limits. Will it keep up with my creativity? Will it keep up with everything that I want to produce? If I'm going to photograph with a brand new camera, the Z8, I'm going to have to push the camera to its limits and photograph the different genres that I do so I know with confidence that when I speak to people that this is exactly what the camera can do. Are we going to get beautiful colour? Are we going to get beautiful results in camera? Is the eye focus going to keep up? Are we going to have a beautiful dynamic range? Are we going to have gorgeous files out of camera? Now, first of all, I've got to tell you about my short film. Now, the complexity of producing a film, well, where do you begin? What story are you going to tell? As Melissa and I were reminiscing about our incredible relationship and our journey so far, I thought how cool would it be to tell the story about a couple's life together and all the milestones that come with it. So falling in love, getting together, having a dog, quiet moments at home, getting married. We throw confetti on the bride and groom as they come out of their ceremony. Having a baby. The child grows up, goes to school, graduates. All these different things gave me a perfect opportunity to test the capabilities of the camera. This story is a reflection of the love that I have for Melissa and the love that Melissa has for me. Now we don't have children, we do have fur babies, and I'm very excited that Zoe, one of my fur babies, is featured in this short film. And one of my favorite shots of the whole shoot is Zoe running into the camera, and we're shooting at f1.2 at 4K, 120 frames a second. Lisa and Dylan are great friends of ours. I've actually photographed their wedding, and we use them as models for this story. When you think of a romantic night, you often think of candlelight or being by a campfire. Now we have a fire pit at home, so we thought, let's turn the fire pit on. Let's have them in a quiet moment next to the fire pit with a beautiful glow of light on them. A quiet moment, nice and romantic. Because we have the power of the Z9 in a smaller body, that beautiful form factor of the Z8. With filmmaking, it's fantastic. You can use it on a small gimbal, on a small form factor slider. You can use it handheld. It's one of those cameras that's the perfect hybrid between photography and filmmaking. The fact that I can actually film in 8K RAW internally up to 60 frames a second is unheard of. You'd normally use a monitor recorder or a separate device to do that. We actually shot the whole film 12-bit and RAW. What does that mean? I'm photographing RAW video. I have flexibility with my color, my exposure. 
using the whole dynamic range to bring out the best in the incredible files that already exist. I was reviewing some of the footage and I'm like, did we photograph in normal standard mode? The colors that came straight out of the camera were exquisite. Now the fact that we have raw files that we can play with and bring out the best in them with our color gamut and all those different things is incredible. Whenever you wanna flick that switch and decide to actually go from filmmaking to photography, it's so simple and so effective and so easy to do. I've fallen in love with photographing performers. Living here in Las Vegas, I'm surrounded by some of the best talent in the world. And what I've learned with performers is nothing is impossible. I'd say, well, can you sit on the ground and bring your legs up and just hold your body weight? Yeah, no problem. Can you handstand and lift your legs up and do the splits while you're doing handstands and hold the body weight of another woman while she's up in the air? Sure, no problem. And the camera held up beautifully. So I wanted to ease into this shoot of this really cool couple. I photographed them as individuals and as a couple. We used strobe, we used natural light. We actually did these beautiful vintage portraits and I loved it. The files that come out of the Nikon camera system are very predictably amazing. So why not test the color and what I can get out of this camera with something really beautiful. So what do you do? Well, <laughs> you paint someone's face with different colors, the palette of what would actually appear in a peacock feather and surround her face and get every one of the entire crew to frame her face with it. And of course you photograph it. And the results were stunning. Having the ability to shoot raw and 45.7 megapixels in camera in this small form factor gives us so much dynamic range and beautiful rich color. So when Nikon approaches you to photograph a campaign, especially for the Nikon Z8, what do you do? Well, you feature a lot of yellow. So we had Ariana in this gorgeous yellow dress in front of this vintage canvas background and the shots were beautiful. That yellow dress with that vintage background against a gorgeous skin tone was so much fun to photograph. And if you're looking for beautiful bokeh and beautiful fall off, get your hands on a Nikon Noct 0.95 aperture photographing on a small little plane of focus, photographing both her eyelashes perfect looking down was one of my favorite shots of the day. I was photographing in my studio and I covered up my entire garage door with a soft diffusion, giving us this beautiful broad big light. We changed Ariana's clothes into a very cool futuristic bodysuit with these glasses and took these very high fashion portraits of her and the camera didn't let me down. I asked Ariana to bring some of her dresses and she went out of her way to get this gorgeous red gown. And she was absolutely as breathtaking as she was in those other looks as well. For the finale of my photography shoot with Ariana, I wanted to finish off with something very dramatic. So we found this beautiful hat. We cut out circles around the hat. And now I'm gonna backlight her with these strong beams of light, get some smoke sort of blowing all in and out through the holes. I was so excited about these photographs. And then I'm like, you know what would be really nice right now is motion. All I had to do was flick that switch to video and press record. Now I have this perfect introduction for a video piece. I have a perfect piece for social media, but it was an incredible finale for an incredible movie. After doing this for three decades, my hunger to create is still as strong as it has ever been. The fact that I now have a tool that is so sophisticated to help me produce these results I love to surprise my audience. I love it when people look at my work and say, that's not your work, that's not you. That's just me being an artist. I want to reinvent myself. The same way that Nikon reinvents their cameras, they're keeping up with what I wanna do and what I wanna achieve. No matter how sophisticated the camera, it takes an artist to bring out the best in it. But you never want the camera system to fall short and be an excuse for bad performance. I've always said the camera is a tool and you make the difference. I never want a camera to be my excuse for bad performance. I have an incredible camera in the Z8 with incredible eye focus. With Zoe running into my camera and focusing at f1.2 at 20 frames a second in RAW, I can have Zoe jumping in the pool and splashing water on my camera. Don't recommend that, don't try it. And still not a problem. We had the camera two inches from the fire and it was still fine. We had it in the cold, high frame rates in the sun. We were shooting 8K at times, never missed a beat. Simply having a built-in sensor shield, I can't tell you how much that's changed my life. I can take my lens off. I don't have to worry about dust getting on the sensor. That sensor shield is a game changer. 
The MCN10 grip is incredible for filmmaking because you can pop it on your arm of your tripod, you can access all the buttons that you need at your fingertips. With a Nikon Z8, it gives me so many capabilities that I can actually get to my result quicker, in a more fun way, more efficient way. In a few months, I'm turning 50 years old. After a week of photographing and filmmaking with the Z8, it was everything that I hoped for. And the overarching theme to my photography and short film this week is that a life well lived all starts with a moment. And those moments were captured with the Nikon Z8. Ready, action.